This copying of the West should stop somewhere there. But we went on. Uh, we want to copy the West in many ways. And today, what do you see? What I was telling about is the past. During my young days. Now, today, what do you see? You see a change in the mindset of our people, which affects their social life. They no longer want to be confined to the house. They want to be free. They want to do what they feel they like to do. They don't want to be disciplined by their parents. These are new ideas coming out of the West. And of course, if it comes from the West, it must be very good. The first thing that they think about now, of course, is about freedom. Of course, we should all go for freedom. We should be free. We shouldn't be shackled and uh, confined to houses and things like that. We should be free. But then, how free should we be? Is there no limit to freedom? Some people say there is no limit to freedom. Anything that I want to do, I should be allowed to do, and nobody should criticize me or scold me or tell me, oh, from your parents um, beat, beat you up. Those things are normal. Our present culture is such that the most important thing in life is freedom. You must be free to choose what studies you want to follow. Uh, during my time, of course, I, I became a doctor by accident. I didn't, I didn't want to become a doctor. I wanted to become a lawyer because I like to argue with people. In the school, I was head of the literary and debating society always uh, arguing with teachers, and the teachers didn't like me. And I thought that if I become a lawyer, I would be able to argue even more. You know, being a lawyer is much better than being a doctor. A doctor has only one direction. When you have somebody who is sick, your job is to cure. Not to make him worse, but to cure him. Of course, sometimes it gets worse, but that's too bad. <laughs> but a lawyer, you can give him whatever job, whether it is defense or, or uh, prosecution, they can argue, both sides. You know, if you ask them to defend, they can defend. Even though you know he is a murderer, the lawyers are prepared to defend. But if you ask him to prosecute, he will also be able to prosecute and has his argument. So lawyers are what I would like to be before I was chosen to study medicine. Then I can argue to my heart's content. But it, they gave me a scholarship to study medicine and you don't ask questions. You just go and study. And I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful I'm not a lawyer uh, although, uh, sometimes I like to borrow their methods as well because they are quite useful when you are arguing with your opponent. But when you are given a scholarship, you just accept. But today, you are given a scholarship, you say, no, I don't want this, I don't want to study medicine, I want to become something else. You argue and you demand that you should be given a scholarship to study whatever it is that you want to study. Freedom. You must have freedom. So the culture has changed. Before you were obedient, there was discipline in the house. Today, our present culture is that you have to be free to do what you like. But then, is there a limit to what freedom you can exercise. This idea about freedom uh, was uh, enshrined by the uh, French Revolution. Uh, but 
egality, fraternity, and, and the like. And that was to be free from the oppression of the king, the ruler. That was the first idea. And of course, it was an excellent idea. But that idea of freedom is carried through now to in every phase of our life. Everything that we do, it must be governed by the need to be free. So what happens? When you are free to do what you like, you can ignore custom, tradition, adat, etc. And the greatest uh, expression of freedom in the West today is to be able, or for a man, to be able to marry a man. So what's wrong with that? He wants to get married to a man. Why should he marry a woman? Small problem, cannot have children. So now men can carry men, marry men, women can marry women as part of the expression of freedom. Now if we continue with our natural urge to copy what comes from the West, we too would say one day, well, why not? I mean, why cannot he marry a man? What's wrong with that? And you ask that question, of course, everybody, somebody will tell you, no, no there's nothing wrong with that. And so when you copy, you have to be selective. Currently, we are still resistant to these ideas. I don't know what you think about these ideas, but maybe we should resist this idea about freedom to that extent. Then there is freedom of speech. You can say what you like. You should be free. But if you say something against somebody, then you might get a reply or you might be punched in the nose. Freedom of the press, for example. Well, it's a good thing for people to have freedom of the press. But when the press decides to insult people, is that the right kind of freedom? You know about what happened with this French magazine called Charlie Hebdo. Charlie Hebdo decided to insult the prophet of the Muslims. What is the result? They get shot and killed by some nasty Muslims. Of course, people who shoot other people must be nasty. So, the claim is that I am free to say what I like. Why should you, you kill me just because I am insulting your prophet? There is something wrong now about freedom. There should be a limit. There should be a limit to freedom because you don't want to have your society un becoming unstable because of the freedom exercised by people. Supposing you go to your friend and you say nasty things about his mother or his fa fa father and he punches you in the nose and you complain, that is my freedom of speech. He might reply, that is my freedom of expression to punch your nose. Imagine society in which there is no limit to freedom. You do just what you like. Then I think that will not be a very stable society capable of developing. So while we should accept Eurocentrism, you should be selective. Take what is good and push off what is bad. That is what you should do if you have a way or you have the capacity to think for yourself. When you are copying anything, never copy without questioning. If you want 
to see the future society in Malaysia, a better society, you have to be selective. Today what we see is the ascendance of the East. The countries of the East are now developing, becoming more powerful, more assertive than in the past. In the past, of course, it is Eurocentric. But in the future, it's going to be Asia-centric. This is not something very new. At one time, China regarded itself as the Middle Kingdom, meaning to say China is the center or was the center of the world. China had anticipated being the center of the world before the Europeans became <coughs> the center of the world. But now it is likely that the center of the world would move east again. And you have to understand there must be something right that is done by eastern countries that has propelled them towards greater heights, so much so that they are now influencing the thinking of the peoples of the world. So while we should look west, we should also now look east and see what is the culture of the east that has enabled the east to catch up and outstrip the west, almost. Of course, uh, the west will never say they have been outstripped, they're still number one, but the east is coming up very, very fast. Now, if we want to have uh, our society uh, fitting in with development in the rest of the world, we need to look east, west, north, and south. Now, we began to look east about the 1980s. As you know, the government introduced the look east policy. Why look east? Because even at that time, it was noticed that we were copying the West without thinking, without selecting the goods and rejecting, rejecting the bad things that are coming out of the West. In the East, already there were countries which were growing and developing and excelling in new knowledge, etc. So we should, if we want the future, the evolution of our future society to be something that is in keeping with what is happening in the world, we should not just look at the West, but we should also look at the East. And in the East, you find a different culture. Although they too were influenced by the Euro Eurocentrism. They were to wait. The Japanese um, changed that system of government because they saw that the European countries in those days, during the time of Emperor Meiji, for example, the Europeans were very strong, very powerful, able to colonize countries, able to invade and uh, take over countries. So the Japanese copied that much but they retain a lot of their own culture. And because they retain a lot of their own culture, they have been able to grow and develop and overtake the countries of the West. So what are the, what are the differences that you see between East and West? In the West, you see this demand for freedom absolute freedom. You want to do anything you can do because nobody should stop you. For example, because of the oppression of the workers in Europe, the idea came that the workers have their own rights and therefore they should protect their rights. How do they protect their rights? By forming unions. And the unions have the power to destroy 
the wealth of their employers unless the employers treat, treat them fairly. That was a good idea, which we should copy. But then, like, like somebody says, uh, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. That is a saying coming from the West, of course. And when the unions discovered they were powerful, they could destroy the company if the company does not uh, meet their demands. First, of course, it is because they were badly treated. But it, later on, when they are very well treated, they still feel that since you have the power, you should exercise that power and make more demands. And so wages in Europe shot up very high. And of course, this is good for society because people have got better purchasing power, etc. But what happens is that the products of Europe became too expensive and could not compete with the products in the East. In the East, where the culture is different, where there are unions, for example, the unions in Japan, they go on strike after working hours. They don't go on strike during working hours. And they work in their own company until they die. The company looks after them from the cradle to the grave. And they have lifelong employment. So they felt there was no need for them to go on strike and demand for higher pay all the time. And because of that, they were able to produce goods of high quality and compete with